the way I picked the tree is um, for it to be suitable to climb, it has to be of a certain age and uh, thickness. So I want trees that are over 50 years old, say, and um, fairly tall, uh, with branches that can support uh, the ropes. So we use a, a giant slingshot to hurl uh, a line through the tree. And it's just a line with um, a beanbag on the end. And that marks where we're going to put the, the rope that supports my weight. And then I, I'm able to climb up uh, from there. By going to the top, it allows me to access the, the leaves that are responsible for uh, supporting the tree. And uh, that's where all the insects are uh, feeding on. I'm just going to go a bit higher uh, to be able to reach those ones. And uh, I'm basically looking for a, a branch that I can uh, sample insects from and, and beat them from. So for example, this would be perfect. Uh, over here, I can uh, sample these leaves. I'm looking for evidence of insects feeding. And I'll use these branches to um, collect those insects that are responsible for that damage. Um, the reason I'm looking at the feeding by uh, these insects is because it has really important links with uh, many ecosystem services. So feeding by insects in the tree canopy such as this um, uh, helps nutrient cycling in the ecosystem, which contributes to soil productivity. And in cases where there's high levels of insect feeding, we have um, effects on uh, services such as maple syrup production, um, during times where there's a lot of insect feeding, uh, this may reduce uh, maple syrup production, timber production. It can have negative effects on trees, um, which people obviously value. Uh, in forests where there's lots of recreation, this can also have negative effects on the aesthetic value of these trees. And so that's why it's important to look at how something like forest fragmentation affects um, levels of herbivory.